previous lecture, we looked at the evolution of I.O. We saw actually how from the processor itself controlling the device or the device interface, it had evolved so that we have a main processor and then we have almost a similar processor for the I.O., its own memory and then the I.O. processor is actually taking care of the I.O. And then we also surmised that possibly the evolution of I.O. would be in such a way that for each type of I.O. there can be one processor. Okay, this is what we were seeing. Now let us take a look today at the I.O. devices, a few devices. Okay, really it is not uh, uh, a full coverage on all types of devices just a few of them just to get some idea about what are the issues involved so that we may have a better understanding in a, uh, say for the study that is uh, preparing ourselves for a study of the bus that is interconnecting the CPU, memory and the I.O. Good? Fine. <laughs> Normally while talking about the processor I was always talking about the performance of the processor and how exactly for improving the performance of the processor, we had also looked at the hierarchies of memory, is it not? For instance, the cache came in mainly to see that the CPU throughput will be more, fine. So essentially it is the performance that we are talk talking about. To improve the performance of it, we will keep doing anything at the system level. Now, when we talk about the I.O. devices, how exactly we would characterize the performance, okay? So this is also something we will take a look at. Now, the moment we talk about I.O., essentially the rate at which the data flows, now this is one specific thing that comes to our mind, because performance in the case of I.O., uh, we will translate in terms of what we may call it as a throughput. In the case of uh, I.O., we have to specifically talk about the data throughput, okay? The data throughput, which is uh, nothing but the rate at which the data can flow between, say, memory and I.O., okay? The data rate, uh, this is something which is concerning about the flow between memory, maybe directly or maybe under the control of the processor. We are all talking about the direct memory access here, flow between memory and I.O., okay? What exactly is the rate at which the data flow is there? So the I.O. device's performance will be given in terms of that. So we talk about high speed I.O. or a low speed I.O. or a medium speed and what not. That is a range of it, okay? So <coughs> that is one thing. Now another one which is uh, related to this I.O. is invariably we will see that disk system is involved, okay? Now how fast you can access a given file because that file may be an input file or an output file, okay, which you store in the disk. Now, when we talk about disk, remember that it not only serves the purpose of storage, but also can serve as input and output device. So, it has a dual role. Now, in terms of these disk systems, we would talk about what is the rate at which the disk accesses take place? Now, this is another thing, okay? The rate at which the disk can be accessed. Now, we will talk more about this particular one when we take up uh, the disk subsystem, okay? So, the I.O. performance will be measured in terms of the data rate, that is essentially which will give an indication about the flow rate of data between memory and the I.O., okay? As I said, uh, when we say memory and I.O., it is not directly accessing the memory. That is also one thing that is the fastest, of course. The other one would be under the control of the CPU, okay? 
right the second one is the disk accesses now when we talk about the disk access what we have in mind is how quickly an input file can be accessed how quickly an output file can be uh, generated okay so these are the things so we have two things to talk about so we will talk about this later because specifically we have to know something more about the disk before we can talk about this so i thought i would mention this uh, performance issue because ultimately uh, the main aim of a computer system design is to see that at the say with the least cost right what is the maximum performance that you can get from that overall system say from cpu from memory or from io okay finally it will get linked to that and invariably you will find that the rate at which the data flows the rate at which you can access a file okay now all these things will play a role in fact uh, that all comes again saying that fine with any of these with one processor this is the limit then other issue will come fine if that is the bottleneck how about having more than one processor does it contribute for instance in in place of one processor if you put two processors does it help does does the performance get just double or what invariably we'll find it will not <laughs> you will find a, 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 a figure of improvement only by 1.6 to 1.8 it will never be two with, because we have two processors anyway we, these are things we will talk about later now specifically we will go into the, uh, some aspects of the io devices per se meaning this is uh, 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 well uh, we are going to talk about some details which really we need not be very much concerned once you know about this okay that is the uh, the lowest level i will talk about and then i will say these uh, things are buffered right in the io interface part and the system will not really look into these low level details good now the simplest one would be to start with say keyboard the uh, first thing okay so <coughs> just a set of keys forming a keyboard now this is typically an input device because whenever we talk about an io device these are the things that would matter what exactly is the unit and then uh, what type of transfer it is whether it's input or output and then uh, who exactly uses it okay so certainly a man will be using some human being is going to use this and then the third aspect is what is the rate at which the data flows so essentially these are the three dimensions along which any of this any of the devices will be categorized that is whether the transfer is an in input or output and who exactly is the user i mean uh, meaning some of them may be uh, controlled by the system itself the man may not be at the other end okay Now in the case of keyboard yes the man is going to use it and the rate at which it flows okay fine now keyboard we take it what is the rate in fact we can say what is the keyboard after all it's not very much different from the typewriter okay so if you take it that at the rate of about uh, 50 words per minute okay this is about really on the high side okay maybe 60 maybe 70 doesn't matter so at the rate of about 50 words per minute if one can type in that's about the highest rate of course the lowest rate can be anything no i can type one character today and i can type another character next day that's nothing huh okay so this is about So we want to see about average it may be 40 maybe even 30 whatever it is so 50 words per minute now this translated uh, we have to see what is the number of letters or characters and then we will t- see in terms of seconds okay now on an average a word consists of about 5 uh, letters or 5 characters 
on an average. This is, of course, an average, right? So, at, for uh, given this particular one, this would mean there are actually 250 characters per minute. I will just uh, round this off to 240. You will know why. Huh? It is approximately 240. Because we have got a mini consists of 60 seconds, no? So, approximately 240 characters per minute. That is, in other words, 250, uh, 240 characters per uh, 60 seconds, right? This minute. So, approximately 4 characters per second. Now, a second consists of 1000 milliseconds. So, in 1000 milliseconds, 4 characters. What does it mean? Essentially, uh, you take about 250 millisecond per character. That is what it is. Agree? So, what is a character? Just one key that is pressed. So, the subsequent keys that will be pressed, there will be a delay of as much as 250 milliseconds, right? That is in 1000 millisecond, there is one second. There are four characters, so 250 millisecond. So, in between two key presses, so we can say a very key press, right? Key press on the keyboard, right? No talking about the keyboard, no? So, every key that is pressed, every key pressed on the keyboard uh, takes at least 250 milliseconds. So, this is the rate at which the data flows. So, that is how you arrive at it. Now, 250 milliseconds, you just imagine, it is very long delay. It is not, it is a very slow one. There is plenty of time, with plenty of time for the processor to process, right. If you assume that, uh, uh, say, you have a CPU hmm, which runs at, uh, say, 10 megahertz, now 10 megahertz itself is a very low frequency, even if you assume 10 megahertz. So, 1 megahertz would be 1 microsecond, 10 megahertz will be 0 0.1 microsecond, that is 100 nanoseconds. So, that is the state, okay, in 100 nanoseconds. So, suppose you have the, the program, which makes use of about, say, some, uh, uh, that is the, uh, the program which processes the input, okay. Because every key press must be linked finally with some character, is it not? Some signal must be generated. So, which key has been pressed in the keyboard? Yeah, there is a program which will, which will have to understand that, right? Fine. Now, uh, this would mean uh, what did I say? One uh, megahertz is one microsecond. So, ten is point one microsecond. That is hundred nanoseconds, right? So, for the state duration is 100 nanoseconds, right. Suppose we have a program say which uh, uh, makes use of some uh, uh, say typically some 10 instructions, okay. 10 instructions are there in the keyboard, uh, what is called uh, uh, key input processing program that generally we call it keyboard routine huh? the 10 instructions now if, if each instruction say needs about another say some 10 states okay just assuming so 10 states so 10 instruction that is for the whole thing so 10 instructions into 10 states that is 100 states are there okay 100 states <coughs> the program goes through and each take state takes 100 nanoseconds. So, for the entire program to analyze which key it is, how much is it? So, we have we are seeing 100 states into 100 
nanoseconds okay so that will be 10 microsecond so to analyze which key has been pressed now this is program execution time that's what it is the whole program what is this uh, uh, program and executed what is it it means that which key has been pressed can be identified in a matter of about 10 microseconds and what is the time we have between two keys 250 milliseconds agreed so there is plenty of time from the this is so this is a really very low speed device input device okay fine now <coughs> let us see about the keyboard mechanical arrangement we just looked at the uh, data transfer rate now, typically, we talk about what is known as a matrix. Now, I'll just assume a matrix of uh, four, uh, four by three keys, and at the intersection of each of these, I mean, put one, uh, say, key. Okay. So, if I put keys like this like this all over okay everywhere what are the two things represent actually say it's something like relay contact or whatever we call so when i press a key in this direction a contact is going to be made a contact is going to be made and uh, if i pass say if I return it to some voltage okay some uh, call it uh, some voltage V high then that particular thing is available on this line okay that is I am energizing this line okay I am energizing this line so when the key is pressed this particular one is passed through the key to this now this would indicate that <coughs> I have to energize these lines, okay, these four lines, and I am going to monitor the signal on these three lines. So, generally, these four lines they call what are known as input port lines, and these three will be called output port lines. So, at the lowest level, the program ex essentially consists of sending some signal here and then seeing what signal comes on what, on which of these output port lines. Now, there is a small problem you can see. When this line has been energized and this key has been pressed then this high voltage is made available here right and we will assume that only one key has been pressed of course if this key also has been pressed then this voltage is available not only on this but also on this okay what we think is simultaneous pressing of two keys really from computer point of view may not be simultaneous because there is going to be plenty of delay all right now there is one other piece of confusion here what is that when this key has been pressed okay we said the whole signal is available on this line but it's not very clear whether it is because of this key or this key or this or this which key pressed has really caused that so that will have to be resolved so what is done is first energy this line and then after some time energy is this line, after some time energy is this line, after some time energy is this line. So, in other words, the so called VH what has been marked can really be done like this that is, this level is VH, okay. Just see, this is 
<coughs> here we have the time axis actually. Okay. Here is the time axis. Now, this particular signal at this instant of time will be sent to line 1. This would correspond to line 2. This will correspond to line 3. This to line 4. Okay. Now, there is no confusion as long as the system can just check, should not miss the signal period. That is, this particular thing should not be missed. It, the output port must be monitored here, 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 and here. Right. Then it will be very clear, there will not be any problem. So, this is the way you resolve which of these four keys is pressed. There is no problem about these three because they will be coming on three different lines, is it not? So, which of the four keys is pressed? There is confusion mainly because you have a common line. Okay. Now, so essentially generating a set of signals on this and putting it on this and looking for at what instant the output signal is generated at what instant, because this time instant is going to tell which of these four keys, there is no confusion about this. And this is, in other words, the resolution among these, between, uh, in, among these in fact, these four, it is solved temporally or use, making use of the time and resolving whether this or this or this is done spatially, because in space we have three different output things. So, in other words, we say by generating an input word and looking at the output word, we will be able to identify which key has been pressed. Maybe this key corresponds to say uh, the character A and this to B and this to C, this to D or whatever it is or maybe numeric, it does not matter. But what I have shown here is only for 4 by 3, in other words, only for 12 keys. Okay, fine. Now, as you can see here, the computer is not going to take, that is the program part of it, is not going to take more than 10 microseconds to see what is, okay, uh, what, uh, which key in fact has been pressed. And nobody can press a key faster than 250 milliseconds. So, there is plenty of time. Agreed? So, good. Now, this is the way it is done at the low end, but really speaking, the kind of thing that you are familiar with, that is we are talking about an I O interface, say if the keyboard is the device, what is the interface for that? The interface for that would be a keyboard controller, okay. The keyboard controller is the interface, which is the one which is going to interface between the keyboard and the bus. Okay. Now, the details I have worked out, all these things will be taken care of by the keyboard controller. Okay. The keyboard controller will take care of all this. That is, there will be hardware as well as the software part associated with that. Okay. Really speaking, the user need not be concerned with all these details. But I am just showing these to indicate to you the data rate okay, and how exactly the whole thing can be organized. The, from the keyboard controller point of view, the keyboard controller is directly going to identify which key and then give the unique key, a uh, unique code associated with that key. Okay. The unique code associated with the key is what is wanted and I mean by the processor, so that it can identify what key was pressed. It does not really need all these details. So, all these which I have worked out is purely from the point of view of the controller design. Okay. Now, this is uh, how the keyboard part of it is handled, uh, typically by one specific arrangement. There are many arrangements by which 
one can identify which key has been pressed and so on. And also, again, really I have not gone into the detail of the code that is generated here. Okay, there can be different codes that, been, that can be generated. Fine? That's about the keyboard. We were talking about the keyboard interface details. Now let's uh, go back to the general picture where we have the CPU, memory, and the I.O. interface, which interfaces the device with the bus of the system. Now, if the device is a keyboard, for instance, as we have seen, then we are talking about this I.O. interface as the keyboard controller. In fact, what I was working out as the input and the output port is the hardware part of this controller. Okay? Now, from the system point of view or from the processor point of view, as we had seen earlier, it is only the CPU will check whether this device is ready, specifically whether this I.O. interface shows that the device uh, was ready and had generated the data. And what is the data it would have generated? It would have generated a code corresponding to the key that had been pressed. Okay. So, the CPU will only look at the status of this and see whether the data is ready, that is the code for the key pressed and then it will read the code. Agree? Now, other details that is the interface, the input output port and all those things we were just uh, seeing a few minutes back, they are all part of the interface. So, not from the system point of view, but from the device I.O. controller point of view. Okay. Good. So, the CPU may be by programmed I.O. technique or by uh, what is that interrupt driven technique okay, will scan and then get that code code for the key that had been pressed. Now, which key and what not, all those things are taken care of by the controller. Certainly, I, I, I talked about only two things, no? programmed I.O. and interrupt. I didn't mention DMA. Why? Because DMA, we have said earlier that it is essentially for very fast device and we had seen how slow the keyboard device is. Agreed? Now, if this device were a fast one, then we, it may be by DMA also. Fine. Now, this is the way it is. Now, if you have a printer, you will have a printer controller. If you have a display, you need a display controller. Okay? And if you have a disk, then you have the disk drive, disk controller, all those things okay, associated with that. But from the bus point of view or from the system point of view, what we need is some code for the data which will have to be transferred. Good. Now, as the second example, now let us take, um, say, display itself. Yeah, why not? Display itself. Now, there are different types of displays that can be there, starting from the simplest, say, an LCD or an LED display, seven segment display. It is too simple, so I will possibly not talk about that let us just take uh, yeah, the monitor okay uh, that is uh, just <coughs> most of the computer users will be using the monitor what do you have on that essentially the principle is not different from what you have on the tv display okay if that is so then uh, as we had mentioned maybe in the beginning of the series uh, we had said then it will be a raster display or we talk about a raster scan, okay? raster scan display or just a raster display. But there may be other mechanisms also. In fact, we had also mentioned about the random scan display or uh, there are many other terms also I introduced, meaning in the, the raster scan. Now, if you just take a look at the screen, then you talk about a line of display okay, that is just corresponding to a point and series of points on that 
I am going to just show it here with some space in between, but there may not be any space. Um, certainly, there may not be much of a space as shown here. And uh, then, suppose on this display, you have a line of display in the sense uh, line of, I am talking about now character, a line of characters. Then we would need quite a few of these raster lines. Okay. Now, generally, when you take a character, for instance, say A or B or whatever, this particular one can be expressed in terms of matrix, say 5 by 7 and so on, and then you can take those specific points. Okay. Suppose using, yeah, in fact, I have just shown here 5 by 5, but the better would be, uh, better resolution will be with 5 by 7. Okay. Now, this particular one, if I do it with uh, yeah, 5 by 7, that is 5 uh, rows and, uh, uh, sorry, the other way, uh, 5 columns and 7 rows, okay, 5 columns and 7 rows, then this would mean that I need 7 such raster scan lines on this, okay, fine. Now, let us just take one line. Now, this is how it is going. And then that uh, scan line will come to the end and then it will go back, okay? not directly like that, but uh, something more is involved in this. Now, in the case of a raster scan, now let us just take a look at oh, what is this? Uh, the three points uh, about any device I was saying. Uh, display is an output unit. So, it is not like keyboard was input. Here we talk about an output unit. And who is using? Invariably, human beings use that. And then the rate at which something can be shown. Obviously, okay, this particular rate at which the data must come. Now, this is the output we are talking about, is it not? So, CPU must generate the data, maybe CPU or maybe the display controller, whatever, whichever you call it. Okay. Okay, finally, this is where we have. Now, here we have the display and here we have the display controller. Now, if you have the raster scan display here, what we are talking about is the appropriate controller for that. Generally, it is called the CRT controller itself because it is cathode ray tube, okay, not different. Now, so <coughs> if for this particular arrangement in which the character can be shown, now for each line of display, by that line what you mean not raster line, but what I am talking about is the characters line, that is a text line, okay. Let us call it, let us uh, say for each text line of display, I would need a minimum of seven such uh, this uh, uh, display lines plus at least one in between two text lines. So, at least eight, maybe nine, okay. Now, on each particular uh, Okay, display line. Then there is going to be either an uh, illumination of that point or non-illumination. In other words, by putting some what like this. Okay, your uh, uh, I, let me work out. <laughs> okay, some what like this. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, does it look like somewhat A? Yeah. Now, just imagine that these points will be closer. So, this is how you generate the display. Now, for the raster scan, for normal this thing, for the electronic uh, beam to go from this end to that end, you can just say approximately it will take about uh, say 52 microseconds. Okay, and then for this to go from here to here, it's going to take another ten or twelve microseconds, something like that. So we say that that is this particular one swing back will be actually uh, that uh, display will be inhibited there. In other words, the blank part. This is in fact called a horizontal blank. Okay. 
horizontal blank. I did not explain this earlier. From here, when it goes, there will be a vertical blank. I did not go into those details. So, nevertheless, we can say that in a total of about 64 microseconds, in total of about 64 microseconds, we have to keep generating these points and then displaying. Otherwise, the persistence of vision will come and then you will not be able to see that character anymore. Well, assuming that across this width of the screen, I am going to have say 80 characters, 80 that is 80 letters. Okay? And already I have said that about there are 5 points I might need for each character in the, in the horizontal direction. And I, at least I would need one extra for space between two characters. So, 5 plus 1, 6. So, 6 dots into 80. So, I have 480 dots overall. So, these 480 dots will have to be generated in the time of 64 microseconds. Really speaking, 52 microseconds, but then you also have this. So, now you can see this, what we are talking about is microsecond. Okay. I have just taken one line that is somewhat like this, either this or this or whatever, just for that particular thing. Okay. So, like this it will have to be generated for what? There are how many? Let us say about 25 lines. 25 what lines? 25 text lines. Okay. Each text line or each text line will consist of these 7, is it not? 7 plus 1, 8 and so on. So, all those things you have to really take that into account. Right. At least one particular this thing. Huh? But really speaking, this scan will be going line by line and finally, it will come back. So, really we have got to take into account all these things while working out the speed. But assuming that, uh, uh, yeah, really we have to work out everything. So, it is not 480 dots, yes, they will have to come in 64 microseconds, that is correct. But then for the electron gun to come back to this place, it is going to take the whole uh, screen. So, that also we have got to really take, in, uh, take, take that into account and work it out. But nevertheless, in 64 microseconds, we have 480 and then you have got uh, 25 uh, text lines and so on so forth. Okay? This whole thing will have to be taken into account. Fine. Now, now you can just see microsecond. Now, what is it? Micro would mean so many megahertz. So, 480 by 64, that is uh, uh, 12, uh, if I take approximately a 60 microseconds, huh? if I just take it as 60, it is easy for me. right? So, we have 8, 8 what? Microsecond we have. So, this will correspond to 8 megahertz. So, this is the frequency at which these things will be coming, am I right? <coughs> 8 megahertz, yeah, this will lead to oh, 8 dots per microsecond, no, it will come in 1 microsecond, 8 dots, ah, 8 dots in 1 microsecond, yeah, 8 dots in 1 microsecond, so in 1 microsecond. Okay, 1 dot in 1 microsecond would mean 1 megahertz, 8 dots will be 1 over 8 megahertz, yeah, 1 over 8 megahertz. Okay. Now, this is in megahertz. What did we have earlier? We had something like uh, the rate 250 milliseconds, is it not? So, the time you can just work it out. Now, this is very one of the fastest devices. 
okay, one of the fastest devices. And uh, uh, in fact, I have not said about all the uh, points in this uh, display. Okay, that is uh, one thing. Now, in the case of random, now this is about the raster scan. Okay. Now, in the case of random scan, now before possibly I talk about random scan, let me go over. Now, this entire thing will have to be stored somewhere and then uh, there are other calculations we have to work on. That is 30 frames per second, this will have to be generated. And all these cannot just like that being a very fast device, all these cannot for instance be controlled by the processor so that the data can be moved to this. So, invariably this being very fast the display controller or in short CRT controller okay, will need a buffer, the data buffer for the entire thing. In other words what we talk about is as uh, they would talk about a frame storage, here we talk about uh, bit image or uh, uh, yeah, <coughs> it is a bit image and we need memory just for that, display memory. In fact, it is a buffer, bit image memory, in fact, specifically it is a buffer. So, this storage, in fact very fast storage will be needed as part of the display controller. Okay? And in fact here the CRT controller and the DMA will also be used because it is a very fast one. The processor will not be generally be able to handle. So, <coughs> what we have is bit by bit now. So, for the entire thing how many bits are there? In other words whatever is going to be displayed each bit that is one RAM cell for each bit that is displayed, that is what you would be having here. Um, that is, uh, it is also called bit storage, okay, bit storage. So, these are all the things that would go into the controller part of it. Now, from the processor point of view, it will just see what is the, uh, because it is not going to deal with the data directly. Because sometimes if uh, these uh, uh, data will have to be changed, then the buffer will have to be updated appropriately. And being very fast, the processor will not directly go in. So, at some point when the display says, yes, I want to display something, immediately CPU will be cut off, the DMA and the CRT controller will take over and then uh, whatever is necessary will be. Um, uh, displayed right from that bit image storage onto this monitor. Okay, fine. Now, uh, now regarding the random scan, what is the difference between this? Now, in the case of raster scan, only in a specific in the specific way, as shown here, line by line, the scanning will be done, and there's also other details. Okay, so see the TV technology. Any book on TV technology, it will talk about interlacing and whatnot. Okay. Whereas, in the case of a ra uh, random scan, a point can be displayed here and next point can be displayed anywhere here and another point here, another point here on different line, then the next point here and so on and so forth. That is randomly, as the name itself indicates. What does it really mean? It really means that at any instant one point is displayed. And that is the reason why it is also called a point plot display. That is only one point is displayed. Okay. And how is that point displayed? Just by giving the x and y axis of this. Okay. The x axis part of it and the y axis part of it. In other words, for the, the controller for the point pro display, really speaking, it is it's enough if it has two data buffers, one for x and one for y. But there will be some problem, why? Because we may not be able to refresh that buffer very fast. Just if you have only one, uh, say, uh, for uh, x coordinate, okay, call it a x data register. 
and another as Y data register. Suppose you have only these two, then only one point can be displayed. But then before another point can be displayed, this will have to be overwritten, right? So it may not be really possible, but minimum that is what you need, okay? And by giving the X and Y and the third one saying, okay, now display, it is in fact a command. So that would uh, go into the uh, what is called uh, uh, the intensity, a command for making that particular thing intense or less, more intense or less intense, that is display or no display kind of a thing, okay? Now depending upon the kind of the display, whether it is a raster scan or a random scan, the controller appropriate appropriately will vary. Okay, then by giving, ah oh yes, uh, like we had in the um, uh, raster scan, the bit image storage, here you can have series of X and Y registers or an array, uh, really speaking, we have to talk about array of registers, array of X and Y registers in a specific sequence, so that the subsequent ones can all be stored, okay. So we talk about arrays array of registers, x, y registers, okay. Minimum is just one pair, but then we can talk about multiple pairs of these registers. And uh, uh, that is what we will be having in the controller, okay, this particular, uh, uh, the display part of it. Good. The, in fact, I have skipped a lot of details, I am just giving you some idea about the difference between these various units. Now if for instance, let us go to the third one, the printer, okay. Then again, now you go to the printer, similarly, similar to what we have seen here, dot by dot you can print or you can print at the character level, right. Now, if you are going to print it dot by dot, then uh, similar to the display we are talking about, we can have a dot matrix because what you have here is a matrix. In fact, what you have is here is a character represented by a set of dots, specifically by a set of matrix of dots, okay, by a matrix of dots. Now, like this you can go on having. So, the dot matrix printer will print only one dot at a time. So really, the head will keep moving over the, over this, eh? will uh, just make an impact on the uh, paper wherever it has to create a dot. Now another one is at the character level. For instance, uh, um, say a line printer. Okay, a line printer or uh, some printers, uh, yes, the, the daisy wheel printer, okay, a line printer and uh, yeah, daisy, daisy wheel printer. These will print, okay, these will print at the character level, meaning a code will go to the printer, right? A code will go to the printer and the code will generate, in the case of line printer, there will be a, actually a chain, okay? The chain consisting of, uh, uh, on which you have these uh, various characters, okay, marked. So that right under the print head, the <coughs> appropriate character will be positioned. Similarly, the daisy wheel, it will be rotating, there will be many characters like this, it will be rotated, so that right under the print head, whatever this thing comes, it will be printing, okay. Now as you can see, dot matrix, line printer, daisy wheel printer, they are all impact printers. That is, finally, a hammer will come and then we will, uh, okay, it makes an impact with the medium that is the paper on which the printing takes place. So you have other types of printers also. Now here, <coughs> you can see at the character level this is going on, right? Whereas here it is at the lower level, and that is at the dot level. 
Now, in general, what are the uh, characteristics of the printer? Printer is also an output device. Okay, obviously, the printout is going to be used by the human, but the output is going to be generated by the system. Okay, right? The printout will be used by the human, and then what is the rate at which it is done? Any essentially, it would involve some electromechanical thing. Okay, so we talk uh, about uh, different speeds, right? Say 50 characters, 100 characters, there are also very fast printers, suddenly not more than say 200, 300, that's about the limit. Okay, and then uh, how close the dot can be? Let's we talk about the resolution. So depending on that, the speed also will keep varying. Now you can see that depending on the type of printer, now here, of course, in the case of a daisy wheel or a line printer, there's going to be the whole character itself available. This is very much like what you find on the typewriter, okay, that block. So the um, resolution of the, um, uh, this thing will be very high. Uh, yeah, resolution will be very high. Now here, unless the dots are very close, we are going to have either a rough print or if there is a fine print or a, um, what you may call as the rough print. Okay, so it depends on uh, the <coughs> spacing between the dots. Okay, now depending on the speed, the rather the rate at which the printing must take place. Okay, the data must be sent. Now, if it's a very slow speed, then the uh, data can come directly. I mean, can be controlled by the CPU. Otherwise, you need uh, a buffer. So generally, in the case of printer, you will only talk about a line buffer, say for one line, not uh, many more, because it's not all that fast. We will say something more about these devices in the next lecture.